Hi, and welcome to another narration presented by yours truly, Cryptids Roost. Please be so kind as to throw punch the like button and smack the ass of the subscription button as well. And remember to tap the notification bell and then select all. That way you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. Oh, and don't forget to share the video far and wide. This will all help with YouTube's algorithm and will help promote the channel more. If you enjoy listening to the following story, be sure to pop over to the author's Reddit profile and drop them a line, or even give them a glowing review. I'm sure they would appreciate it. The link to their Reddit profile will be below in the description. So grab your coffee, sit back, and enjoy the show. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. Keeper of the Necromonicon, Part 7 this fantastic series is written by Fredigran, a wonderful author over on his own Reddit Fredigran subreddit. Final fight. Sherlock was gone. He died a painful death trying to breathe, the inside of his throat swollen up. Jens, the blood of Christ, was dead too. Abdi, in his demon form, was burning the mastermind's followers left and right. They all died burning and screaming in pain, running around setting fire to each other. The Elf Queen escaped and got dressed. Jens' guardian angel appeared to still be in mourning at his side. The lizard man was biting the head off of one of the mastermind's soldiers and swallowed it whole. I was head shooting foe after foe. Lugna guided my bullets straight into the enemy's brains with their telekinesis. The battlefield was filled with blood and guts brain matter and corpses. Seemingly out of nowhere, an invisible dagger struck the tentacled monster right into his big chest eye. It screamed in pain. It grabbed Wells, the invisible man, with its tentacles and tore him limb from limb with his head last. So he had been on our side all along. This is not my final form! The monster transformed again. This time, it looked like a bubble with eyes and tentacles all over. Sanna had stopped sucking the blood of Christ out of Jens. She smiled with her big sharp vampire teeth. She grew one white wing because she was half angel still, and another dark bat-like wing because she was now half vampire. She was 100% killing machine. She grabbed the Spear of Destiny in one hand and the Excalibur in another. Sucking the blood of Christ out of Jens must have given her the power to wield the mythical blade. She pierced the Yogg-Sagoth looking monster right into his main big eye with the Spear of Destiny, the same spear that had pierced Christ's body, now pierced the eye of this abomination, and she began to cut off all his tentacles with the Excalibur, dual wielding two legendary weapons at once. I guess Van Helsing must have bitten her and given her vampiric powers. I also guessed this was the secret my father spoke of. She went at it for a good while, hurting the monster. Finish him! Lubna told the demonic son. Bale fire! With one final, immensely powerful fire attack, the monster burned and died once and for all. Let's go team! We must go to the genius! so he can get us to Atlantis, the sunken city. We must keep the Necromonicon safe once and for all, I told my team. Lubna, the Arab beauty, her son Abdi, transformed into his human form, a small boy. The elf queen, Naneve, now fully dressed, grabbed a sword from the corpse of her burned lover, Elfric, the elf king. Chameleon, the lizard man, shapeshift into human form. Sanna put a helmet on again so the sunlight would not burn her half-angel, half-vampire face. Sherlock, Jens, the blood of Christ, and Wells, the invisible man, were all dead. But we had no time to mourn the loss of our friends. We had to get going. To Atlantis, the sunken city. We went further into the woods, and all of a sudden, the Elf Queen's blade began glowing green. The blade of my dead lover, the Elf King, is glowing. It is signalling that enemy forces are near. Oh no, not again. We had barely had time to rest or mourn the loss of our dead friends. Jens, Wells and Sherlock, I spoke. Don't worry, the elves are children of the forest. 
When I sing my song, the trees and nature will help us. Our stories are intertwined for the moment, Keeper of the Necromonicon, but I must soon climb the world tree, Yggdrasil, back to my own realm of the elves. She began singing, a song of nature's life and our enemy's death. Me and Chameleon, the lizard man from the Illuminati, gunned down the enemy forces that were approaching. Trolls and ogres, werewolves and wendigos. Santa was violently attacking, swinging the Excalibur sword, decapitating many a foe, and the spear of destiny piercing and gutting others. Lubna threw daggers and with a telekinetic ability guided them into the eyes and brains of the enemies. Her son Abdi transformed into his demon form and sent fireballs to the size of soccer balls at the enemies, burning them to death. And so Neneve, the elf queen, finished singing her song. Rocks and trees came to life and fought for our side. They gave us plenty of time to escape. We ran and found Yggdrasil, the world tree. The elf queen climbed it and went back to her realm. We travelled for another day, living off mushrooms and berries from the forest. Chameleon pointed us to a cave unseen by human eyes, but his reptilian eyes could spot it. Inside were many of his kind. The Illuminati, the secret society of lizard people. Shit, I never thought the tinfoil hats like Alex Jones would be right. But yet, here we were. They all stood around a giant nuke. Don't forget, if you enjoyed that story, be sure to pop over to the author's Reddit profile and drop them a line or even give them a glowing review. I'm sure they really would appreciate it. The link to their Reddit profile will be below in the description. Don't forget to check out the merch store. The link will be in the description and also in the video thumbnail. And if you'd like an honourable mention, send in a snapshot of yourself with your purchase and I'll feature it in one of the videos. Have you written a creepypasta story you would like me to narrate? Have you had any cryptid sightings? paranormal or supernatural encounters, or even at a, a creepy or terrifying situation you would like to share? Well, I now have my very own subreddit community, where you can submit your stories. The link for that is also in the thumbnail, as well as below in the description. You can submit your stories there, or you can send them to cryptidroost at gmail.com. If you wish to remain anonymous, that's fine with me. Now, I also have a Facebook group, Twitter, Reddit and Discord. And if you'd like to support the channel and help make it grow, my PayPal is paypal.me slash cryptidsroost and any and all donations would be gratefully received. Again, that will also be below. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. Level of